from last week's episode of Explosion. I'm not thinking of using an axe to make a fire break. There's a better way. Nitroglycerin. That's a good idea. Who's going to carry it? Mr. Carter will, for one. He's the best nitro man in the mother load. Charlie. You won't be taking that stuff to a nice, cool mine, you know. You'll be taking it right in the middle of a forest fire. Am I really worth that much to you? If I didn't think so, I wouldn't be going. Oh, come back. Please, come back safe. I need you. It isn't just Granite City now. Fire's on its way to Stockton. Ten gallons of nitroglycerine? What am I going to say to Mrs. Barkley? Miss Ogdra? You're not going to say anything. The less they know about this, the better. Leave that wildcat to me. <laughs> I was afraid that my manners wouldn't be good enough for you. I thought that would bring a speedy recovery. Nobility, huh? Well, I've had smoother deals put to me by dance hall girls. And even they weren't peddled by their fathers. Well, you might be interested to know, Marquis, that you didn't have to drag your daughter through the mud. My brothers and I had decided to take that nitro before I came here this evening. Hi, Jared. Hello, Harry. Have you seen my brothers? Not since I left with you. No. Well, I guess I'll have a whiskey. Money's no good in here tonight. How come you haven't left town like everybody else? Listen, everything I got in the world is tied up in them whiskey barrels down in the cellar. Now, the last time there was a fire, I went out to help fight it. Oh, we stopped it all right. But while I was gone, I was looted out of every drop. And it's not going to happen this time. Here, help yourself. I gotta get some more water. I'm glad you didn't take off, too. I got no place to go. <laughs> Me either. Fire and scale, huh? Nope. You haven't paid for the last one yet. That's enough. 
I didn't do nothing wrong, Mr. Barclay. She's supposed to be nice to the customers. I know. Come on, over here and sit down. thousand dollars really mean that much to you? Get out of here. Sure seems to be my night for making out wills. Lawyer, you could have helped before, not now. That's where you're wrong. Get out of here! You think this is what Charlie was carrying that nitro for? He was stupid. Lady, I knew him a long time. Believe me, he wasn't stupid. Look, this is none of your business. There sure must have been something mighty special about you. Special. You didn't have to be special to attract a man like Charlie. He was a hard rock miner, trapped all week long in a mine shaft. Anyone would look good to him. Anybody who was a little bit nice to him. There are lots of girls downstairs who are in the business of being nice. Charlie picked you to be his wife. Now, why do you suppose he did that? I don't know. Look, I, I know what you're trying to do, and you don't fool me. You couldn't have fooled him, either. He must have thought you'd make him a good wife. Me? You. I'm a saloon girl. What of it? I've been one since I was 15. I never even seen a decent marriage. My father ran away, and my mother. Let me tell you about my mother. When boys used to come to our shaft to see me, they used to have to bring a bottle of whiskey for my mother. Or they didn't get in. You're not your mother. Well, I'll tell you something else. Charlie meant only one thing to me. Two thousand dollars and a chance. To do what? To get out of here. To come home to one room at night. My own. To one man. No more Toby's slobbering all over me. No more having to pretend and smile to like being clawed and pawed. I can't go back to it. You thought Charlie was stupid, huh? Well, you just told me what it was he saw in you. And I'll tell you something else. I think you would have made him a good wife. All right. Maybe I would have. He was a good man. Oh, at first it almost made me sick, the idea of, of living with a man old enough to be my father. <clears throat> but that, then I realized he wasn't getting any bargain either. But together we could have both gotten what we wanted. But he's dead now. So you're just giving up, huh? How long am I supposed to fight? You don't know what it is to be someone like me. Everywhere you turn, you're caught. I was born in hard luck, and it's never going to change. Don't blame it on hard luck. You put yourself in that dress. Oh, for an expensive lawyer, you give pretty cheap advice. Go on. Let me hear the rest of your sermon. Easy virtue, easy way out. With that gun in your hand, your way doesn't seem so easy. Get out of here and leave me alone. Gail. Get out of here! All right. I've got enough trouble of my own. Oh, troubles. You don't know what that means. You've always thought the grass is greener somewhere else, haven't oh, you? you're breaking my heart. You're about to lose one of your lousy gold mines, aren't you? If it'll mean anything to you, my brothers and I are taking that nitro out in the morning. But... We, you've got everything. How can you throw it all away? I don't plan on throwing anything away if I can possibly help it. It's kind of nice to think you're doing the same thing. Now, come on, why don't you give me that gun? Come on, give it to me. You 
You don't have to have $2,000 to feel like it. Spread the word on you. You'll never get another job in any saloon in Stockton. You can bet on that. I'm in Stockton or any place else. <laughs> You're getting awful uppity. What happened? You find somewhere to take old Charlie's place already? <laughs> about this hearse being the smoothest ride in town, but it sure don't inspire confidence. Well, have somebody just flatten out the Yuba Trail, huh? Sure hope you know how everybody in town feels about what you're doing. Well, the Valley's been good to the Barclays. We're sort of paid in advance. You're doing a good job here, you know? Just wish I didn't feel like I was building a coffin for good friends. I'm sure there's a better way you could have put that, Jim. Well, now, like I told you, I'm gonna make you the best rig ever to roll out of Stockton. Now, you just go take it easy. Find yourself a girl and have some fun. There must be one left in town. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, I might just do that. Mr. Barkley, I want to apologize. There's no need. It was my fault. I guess I handled it badly. No, I was wrong. Well, maybe we both made a mistake, Miss... Wells. Bridget Wells. Well, why don't you just forget about it? Mr. Barkley, would you mind walking me to the mission? Well, those men won't bother you again. Oh, I wasn't thinking of them. I... I'd like to talk to you. I'm sure there's something else you'd rather be doing, but it's... It's important to me. All right, come on. Have you been to the mission before? No, but I've been by it a couple of times. I guess that's the trouble. Most people just go by it. I, uh, heard that you were taking the nitro. That's right. You could be killed. Well, I've thought about that a time or two. Is that what you wanted to talk to me about? Well, yes, partly. Uh, won't you come in for a cup of tea? Look, I... I promise not to preach. What would I talk to you about anyway? Courage, duty, conviction. You already practice what I preach. Please. I'll put the water on. My family. The Wells have been missionaries for 150 years. Do they live in Stockton? They're dead. They went down into Mexico, into Yaqui country. The Yaquis murdered them. I'm sorry. They knew what they were doing. They knew it was dangerous. Even the Mexican army wouldn't go into Yaqui country. 
Why are you taking the nitroglycerin? Well, I guess because there's no one else to go. I wish I had your courage. Talk fast enough, might let you take my place. How do you really feel? About tomorrow. Well, the less thinking I do, the better. But you must have some kind of fear. How did you overcome it? Maybe I've just been scared so many times, it's a habit to ignore it. Why did I have to be born with the devil of fear inside of me? I told you my family were dead. Aren't you wondering why I didn't go with them? I didn't have the courage. I pretended to be sick and stayed here while my family were offering presents and love to the Yakis. So hopeful, I'm sure, while they were murdered in their sleep. I have no right to be here. I have no right to be alive. What would you have proved if you'd been killed? That at least I'd have had the courage of my convictions. I've always been afraid to try anything. Please, give me some of your courage. What did that prove? Well, my father once told me about a tribe in Africa where the young men eat the heart of a lion and, and from it draw its courage. Did he say it worked? The natives thought so. Sometimes if you believe things will work, they will. I'm afraid it won't work in this case. I'm no lion. She isn't. She's upstairs with the others. No, Miss Hunter. She ran away. What is it? Mary's run away. When did she go? Just a little while ago. A few minutes. Do you know where? Back to the orphanage. Well, she couldn't have gone very far. Come Well, they are all safely tucked in now. Padre, Mary's going back to the orphanage. Oh, no. we better start looking for her, but we'll do better if we separate. I'll look down the road. You take the back. I'll take the corral. has told me about your family. Your sister is with your mother and father now. She is not. I put her under my bed so she couldn't get hurt. There is no Susie. Don't say that! Don't say it! She'll burn unless I get her! How can I make you understand? All right, Mary, tell me about it. No. Oh, please, please. Please, you, you tell me all about her. Now, what does she look like? She has blonde hair and blue eyes. Only one shoe, but I promised her another one. I know you love her very much. But 
Isn't it possible that Susie is a doll? Someone you want to believe is your sister? No. She is my sister. She's the only one I have left. Oh, no, no, no. That's not true. That's not true. You have us and the Padre, and we care very much what happens to you. Come on. Let's go back to the house. Please don't make me. Well, I'm hoping you'll want to come. You see, Mary, the children are afraid. You've been through a fire. They will listen to you. Now let's go back to the house. The children are waiting for you. She's asleep now. I think she's going to be all right. Good. I do not know how to thank you for your kindness, senora. Father, I wish we could have done more. Gracias. I'll see to the others. Oh, Silas, hitch up the wagon. We're going into town. Stockton? Well, with all these children, we're going to need fresh supplies. The stranger's in town, Miss Buckley, the fire. Oh, we'll take our chances. I am not about to face a lot of hungry children at breakfast. Miss Buckley, please don't go in town now. Please don't. Why not? I tell you what, Mrs. Barkley, I'll go in town for you. Silas, we've been together for a long time. Now, what are you trying to hide from me? Nothing, Mrs. Barkley, nothing. Look me in the eye and tell me that. I told Mrs. Jared this would happen. Tell me. But I promise. Silas, you know I'm going into town, and you know I hate surprises. Your son's going to blow a fire break. Blow a fire break. Mr. Carter and two men were killed yesterday trying it. The nitro blew upon them. Nitroglycerin. I'll be back as soon as I can, Audrey. I'm going with you. What's the matter? I forgot. They're not my boys anymore. They're men. Men can make mistakes. And do with great frequency, but... That's their right. Can't we even go in and say goodbye? No. Because we'd point out all the reasons why they shouldn't do it, and... the more right we were... the harder it would be for them to do. They should be here pretty soon. Yeah. Say, Nick. Yeah? You never did tell us. How was life among the aristocracy? Well, now, you boys wouldn't believe the impression I left on that girl. Why, before I left, she offered me anything I wanted, and the Marquis. Why, now, he was so impressed, he... he was speechless. You wouldn't care to fill us in on some details, would you? No. I thought so. Uh-huh. You know, gentlemen, as we approach the brink, the question occurs to me. Was that just a lot of academic information you were throwing around in that saloon? Or do you really know what you're talking about? Oh, and that reminds me. I hope you did a good job making out our wills. That was not the answer I'd hoped for. Relax, Jared. Nick knows as much about nitro as he does about art. There's a comforting thought. I think you boys better save your jokes for the Uber Trail. 
By then, I think we're going to need a few laughs. China shop again. If we get back in one piece, you can call me anything you like. Just up ahead, Jared.
What's the matter? This one's leaking. Which one is it? Seems to be leaking right here. This one's half full. This one. From here. Put it over there. Better see where it leaked to. It's on the other side. Seep down through the bed here. Right onto the brake linkage. Yep, and it's going to travel all along that linkage until it comes down here to the brake shoe. And one touch of those brakes, and we're going to be blown to San Francisco. All right, we'll have to take them off. I'll start carrying the nitro to the other side.
you, Jared. that who knows like I said this stuff's very unstable I think it just proved your point to me like the Barkley luck has finally run out. Be just a little tricky carrying that stuff down on foot. Too tricky. One slip in that soft dirt and it's all over. So, that leaves us with one special built hearse from St. Louis with no brakes. We can rough lock the rear wheels. If it'll hold. There's just one way to find out. Don't let him get away now, yeah? With these two horses coming down on top of me, I was about to say the same to you. All right, let's go. Get up. Ha! Get up. Ha! Get up now. Ha! Get up now. Ha! Get up. Ha! Ha! Well, we 
best get to plant that nitro. What's that girl doing here? Richard! What are you doing here? I'm trying to reach some of the farmers. They may be trapped by the fire. You've got to get out of here. But they may need help. Bridget, you can't go any farther. Well, then let me help you. Look, I have to do something. All right, come on. All right, what's going on? Is she out of her mind? She's going to stay with the horses. I'll explain later. Does she know we're carting? She knows. Well, now, wait a minute. I think we haven't got time to argue. Let's get started. All right, if that fire gets too close, you take the team and yourself out of here. Get in as close as you can and set them in a straight line. We'll work our way back. Pick the biggest trees. All right, come on. in each one of them. When you get it all set, fire off a shot. When we hear three shots, set them off. All right? Thank <laughs> you. 
hope you get your wish, Mrs. Bartlett. I already have. My sons came home safely. Well, Jared, you're good at speeches. You want to... Oh, uh, well. Mother, I'll make it short and sweet. With all our love. Charles Russell? Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you all very much. Fairweather, well, a friend of mine, said that we were bringing culture to Stockton. I'm surprised no girls for either of you. I don't know why. I'm sadly disillusioned, I'm afraid. What about you, Jared? Mine is a sad story also. I so completely reformed the lady that she moved to San Francisco and opened a dress shop. You might say I talked my case right out of court. get fresh with you in there? Oh, no. I can't stand it in there anymore. I know just what you mean. Must be my arm in there, huh? You see them rocks over there? Oh, why don't you and I walk over there in the shade and let you get a little bit of fresh air? Would you like that? Get back inside there. Lock them in there. Come right here with me now. Just walk real slow. Make one little stop here. Get us a little bit of this. Like a little bit of this. so poorly. We still got four days to go to Furnace Hill. I can't get back in that sweat box anymore. Please let me ride outside. Uh, honey, I don't make the rules. The men that own the prison make the rules. And the rules says that all prisoners got to ride inside the wagon at all times. But you know the old saying about rules, don't you? that they made to be broke. Well, maybe you and I could work a little something out. I mean, when you get to Furnace Hill, you're gonna find out mighty quick, girl, that uh, being nice to the guards is gonna make life a whole lot easier for you. Get up. Get up.
Mr. Barkley. Oh, sure a hot one today. Well, is there any other kind of day in this part of the country? Well, now that you mention it, uh, no, I guess not. I uh, guess uh, that stockholders meeting out at the mine is going to be pretty hot, too. What makes you say that? Well, I heard a couple of the stockholders talking about uh, cutting back production. That's going to hurt Hayes Center pretty bad. Oh, don't you worry about that, Harvey. I'm sure the Barkley family has enough stock to prevent anything like that from happening. Well, <laughs> folks here are sure going to be happy to hear that, Mrs. Bar Barkley. I almost forgot a telegram oh. just came for you. Oh. oh, dear. Something wrong? It's from Heath and Jared. They were supposed to be here for the stockholders meeting, but now they're delayed in Sharpville until tomorrow. Well, I guess I'll have to go by myself. Would you get me a buggy, please, Harvey? Sure, right away. Uh, but, uh, look, that uh, trip out the mine's pretty long. You want a driver? Oh, no, no, I can manage. You know, I can't tell you how much this town appreciates what you and your family have done for us. We just wish there was just something we could do for you. Oh, there is, Harvey, there is, but uh, I'm afraid it's impossible. Now, you just name it. All right. On my next visit, could you possibly, could you just possibly arrange for a nice, cloudy day? Good enough. We still get a hundred dollars for the woman? And the Furnace Hill only pays for live bodies. Oh, oh boy. Hello. I hit a rock and lost the wheel. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to help me get it back on. a while back there on the road. That's right. You from around here? No. Just visiting? I'm on my way to the Rose Mountain Mine. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Where are you from? Stockton, California. Well, that's a long way, ain't it? Mm-hmm. need to lose our hundred dollars after all. Put her in a wagon. Put her in a wagon. No! 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 Let me go! Let me go! Let me... Rig out of sight and run that horse off. Senor? What's the matter? You boys don't understand? We done got ourselves another flow Briggs. <sighs> That's right. Them boys at Furnace Hill ain't gonna know the difference. Come on and get it done. Now. Now. Let me out of here! 
here. Let me out of here! The last lady who yelled that never got back in again. Better save your strength. You're gonna need it when you get to Furnace Hill. Furnace Hill? Never heard of it? It's a prison. About four days due east of here, as the buzzards fly. What do they want with me? It's simple enough. Mr. Skeels lost a prisoner, a woman. Her name was Flo Briggs. He killed her. Killed her? Because she wouldn't... Well, that's irrelevant. The point is, she's dead. And you're taking her place. Because Mr. Skeels gets $100 on the hoof. That's what he gets for every prisoner he brings in. When I get to the prison and I tell them who I am, that they... I want to see you trying to tell them you're not Flo Briggs. Lady, you're on your way to a black pit. If you think Gabe Skeels is bad, will you meet the men who run Furnace Hill? The territory is going to give them $50 a month. They try to keep you locked up. That's all you're worth to them, 50 a month. They won't give a hoot who you are or how you got there. I know Furnace Hill. I've had friends who have sent there. It's a jungle, like something out of the dark ages. You're alone there, all alone. The only thing that matters is trying to stay alive. You mind your business and do what you're told, and maybe, just maybe, you won't leave it in a box. You was gone. Hmm? You. You. You're an animal. Ow! At a hundred dollars a head. Think you can afford to kill two women in one day? Shut up. Keep an eye on him. We're gonna water the horses. wasn't very smart. I didn't ask your opinion, Mr. Burke Jordan. And who are you? Victoria Barclay. Victoria Barclay? 
from Stockton, California? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. Ah, it's too good to be true. <laughs> well, what's so amusing about it? Hey, Skills, come here. Come here. What do you want? <laughs> you know who you got here? Who? That's Victoria Barclay. Of the Stockton, California Barclay. So? Skills, you haven't been keeping up. I mean, everybody knows Victoria Barclay. That's one of the most respectable families in the whole state of California. Oh, yeah, very, very respectable. Very rich, too, right, Mrs. Barclay? She owns one of the largest ranches in the whole San Joaquin Valley. She's got money to burn. Yes. Yes, I've got money. And she'll pay you and let her go. Right, Mrs. Barclay? Shut up. How much do you want? Well, what the man says is true. If you really as rich as he says, about five thousand dollars. All right. Now let's have it. I'll get it for you in Hayes Center. Oh, you can get it for me in Hayes Center. Honey, there's a lot of things you could get for me in Hayes Center, including being arrested for kidnapping. Put them back in the wagon. Oh no! See, I'll give you more. I'll give. Why? Why? You mean, why do I hate you, Mrs. Barclay? Do you? No, Mrs. Barclay. Just your money. Move. Move. Ship. Of course, I realize this isn't the kind of cuisine you're used to, but then uh, this isn't the palace in San Francisco, is it? Uh -huh. You know San Francisco? Well, I was stationed at the Presidio right after I graduated from West Point. Then I went back after the war, built myself a house on Russian Hill, spent a half a million dollars on it. That's quite a house. 25 rooms, dozen servants. And I lived there all alone for two weeks out of every year. What business were you in? I was a mining engineer. I spent all my time in the camps. And one day I took a flyer on Old Glory Hall. Everybody said it had been worked out. I hit a vein that ran from there till a year from Tuesday. Three months I was worth three million dollars. You don't believe a word of it, do you? Should I? It's the truth. And I believe it. You better eat. It's slop, or it'll get worse in Furnace Hill. I'm not going to Furnace Hill. Oh? They'll have to kill me first. Three million dollars. I lost it. How? I built a railroad in Colorado. From my mine right through the mountains to Durango. All but 30 miles of it anyway. Then I ran out of money. Tried to borrow some. I couldn't do it. Why not? Because the syndicate of bankers wanted to freeze me out, that's why. Oh, they were very polite and very well mannered about it. And they were finished. They even owned the boots I was wearing. 
You might even know some of those gentlemen, Mrs. Barclay. Some of them might even be your good friends. They're your kind. And, uh, did my kind put you in here? Well, it depends on how you look at it. I decided I'd try to get some of the money back from those worthy gentlemen. I made a list of their banks. I got me some men together. We hit seven of them before the law cornered us at Gold River a few weeks ago. I got caught. Two of my men escaped and the rest got killed. Why are you so interested in me, Mrs. Barclay? Because I... Well, I just don't think you're the kind of man who would go to Furnace Hill without a fight. All depends. If you think I'm as dead set against it as you are, you're wrong. If it comes to a choice between Furnace Hill and dying, I'll take Furnace Hill. But you have plans. Do I? I think so. Good night, Mrs. Barclay. Again, Mac, how are you? Fine, fine. How far down are you, Mac? Well, we broke 400 feet at the main shaft yesterday. If you'll just let us keep going. 400 feet, huh? Well, I think we intend to do just that. The other stockholders are down looking at the main shaft now. Uh, by the way, wasn't your mother supposed to come out with you? Well, isn't she here? Here. No. She hired a buggy in town and rode out yesterday. I haven't seen her. Something must have happened to her. I think we better take a look. Tell Skeels the truth. About what? Being able to raise five thousand dollars in Hayes Center. Mm-hmm. You made a good guess last night, Mrs. Barclay. I do have plans. In about an hour, we'll be going through a narrow pass called the Patchy Gap. The two men who got away at Gold River are going to be waiting there. I had a friend make the arrangements before Skeels took me out of the jail at Gold River. I'm gonna need some traveling money. Five thousand, and my men and I will take you with us. Otherwise? Otherwise, we leave you behind with skills. Apparently, you don't hate my money as much as you pretend, Mr. Jordan. Yes or no, Mrs. Barker? I'll get the money. No tricks. No tricks. Be out of this oven in about an hour. Gap. They must be good friends. Friends? It's just a word somebody invented for something that doesn't exist. Uh, Judd and Tim are doing this for only one reason. They think I've got some gold buried somewhere. Friendship hasn't got a thing to do with it. You must have had to work awfully hard at it to become as cynical as you were. Yeah, that's a fact. I came out of West Point. I was a regular knight in shining armor, swinging my saber around, looking for my first dragon to slay. There was one thing I didn't know about dragons. What's that? I fight back. I fight dirty. Like those estimable gentlemen that took my railroad away from me. Oh, they were very expert dragons. They knew every rotten trick in the book. I told you they were out there. Hey, John, Tim! You don't think... 
like it, I knew you was up to something, boy, the way that you was acting. Huh? This gap here is the ideal place for bushwhacking. So I sent my two men here around a long way, and they surprised them two boys and did a little bushwhacking of their own. <laughs> Like somebody lost a wheel. Look at this, Heath. It's hers. She could have unhitched the horse and gone for help. Got lost. You don't believe that, and neither do I. No, I don't. This is my ankle. Someone. Someone? That's right. Our mother. She disappeared between Hayes Center and Rose Mountain Mine. Well, y'all have to excuse me for being so skittish. But I just lost me a couple of prisoners. Real mean ones, too. They killed my man here. We've been out trying to track them back there, but I think they got clean away. You say it's your mother disappeared on the Hayes Center Road? 
That's right. We found her buggy ten miles outside of town behind some rocks. Well, we was on that road just the day before yesterday. Matter of fact, we cut off at about ten miles outside of town. We didn't see no buggy anywhere. But we're going on to Furnace Hill now to let them know about these two escaped prisoners. And I surely will keep my eye out for them. Come on, help me load him up. A bullet isn't going to do that. Well, I guess I'm stuck with you. Come on. Where? A little trading post run by an old man named Ogden. I staked it out, and I thought Judd and Tim could break me out of the patchy gap. How far is it? 20, 25 miles doesn't make any difference. It's the nearest thing to civilization within 100 miles in any direction. Well, in that case, won't Skills guess that's where we're going? That's why we haven't got any time to waste. <laughs> Find any tracks? Not a sign of them. You know something I've been thinking? They done gone to Ogden's place. It's a mighty long walk. Yeah, there ain't no place else for him to go. Come on. Yeah, look at that. We're heading south. That's funny. Didn't they say they were going to Furnace Hill? Yeah, that's due east of here. How long have I been out? A little over an hour. You could have been five miles away by now. Perhaps even farther. Well, why aren't you? Because you were hurt. Now, look. Let's get one thing straight. We don't owe one another a thing. Not a thing. I didn't ask you to stay. You could have got on there. Get some water. 
Yes. Yes, yes, I'm all right. Why did you come back? I don't know, Miss. I, I guess I always did want to take one more crack of the dragon. Just to remember what it was like. is some information I had the bank get me about Burke Jordan. His story was true, Jared. He, he did own a mine, and he was building a railroad to Durango. Oh? Jared, did you ever hear of Prado Valley? Prado Valley? Yeah. That's land the federal government's open for homesteading. Burke Jordan's railroad runs right through it. I think anybody who took it over and completed it would be making an excellent investment. 
Uh-huh, probably would. You want me to look into it? Please. We'd probably be getting into quite a battle with the bankers who tried to squeeze him out. I know. But I want to complete that railroad, Jared. Even if it is too late for Burke Jordan, I want to prove that dragons don't always win. Thank you.